that man has built comes crashing down around him. You cannot continue to prosper. with. We ain't prospering. America's not prospering. She's in so much debt, it ain't even funny. Amen? Why? Because she has forgotten God. She has forgotten His statutes. She has forgotten His laws. She has forgotten His ways. She has forgotten His blessings. She has forgotten His word. She's not prospering. You might stand back and say, wow, America's really a prosperous nation. Yeah. We're in so much debt to China and other countries today that if they decided to foreclose, we'd have to go bankrupt. Amen? You can stack money from here to the moon and still not pay off the debt that we owe. Why? Because she has forgotten God. Churches are spiritually bankrupt today. Why? Because they have forgotten God. Oh, they've got drama teams. They've got their little, their little cliques and their little movements and they've got their little clubs, but they've got no God. They've forgotten God. And you can look back through just as Bill Dad suggested to Job. Job, look back and see the examples of others. I encourage you to do that today. Look back at the ones in the Bible that we have Recorded for us, written down, historical accounts of men that forgot God. Nations that forgot God. And see what their outcome was. It's the same as what Bildad was telling Job. Their hope was cut off. They trusted in a spider's web. Their house of cards came crashing in around them. Why? Because they forgot God. Paul talks about a people in Romans, the first chapter. You don't have to turn there. I'm not going to read it all. But he talks about a people there that decided not to retain God in their knowledge any longer. The 28th verse of Romans, the first chapter says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they decided to forget Him. They decided to forget God. Oh, man has done that. Amen? America has done that. And listen what kind of fruit, what kind of people it brings forth whenever you forget God. When you refuse to retain Him in your knowledge any longer. He says, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, proud, despiteful boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection in place. It's easy for you today to live a homosexual lifestyle as long as you forget about God. Because if you begin to remember God, if you begin to acknowledge Him, if you begin to retain knowledge of Him, Unless you've been deceived by some kind of smiling preacher that pats you on the back and tells you you're okay, I'm okay, everything's okay for you to do and you'll still go to heaven, you will begin to feel the convicting power of God because you will read in His Word. If you will remember His Word today, y'all remember His Word, don't you? Amen. A lot of the church don't because they don't have His Word no more. They have the NIV and the good news for modern man. They don't have the Word of God. If we remember His Word, He said it is an abomination in the sight of God. This here tells us the fruits of a people who do not retain God in their knowledge. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. I just read you the whole list. Without understanding. Verse 32 says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only have they forgotten God, but they take pleasure in those that also do the same thing that they did. We're talking about forgetting God this morning and the consequences of it. They did not, they did not like to retain God in their own knowledge. Man, the creation, has become so foolish and so puffed up in pride that he literally thinks he no longer needs his Creator. So it's easier for him to forget God, to dismiss God, to expel God, and to move in some kind of crazy doctrine like we came from monkeys or something, to move in with some kind of crazy evolution theory, it's easier for him to live with himself if he does that because if he remembers there's a God, he'll remember that He is the Creator. And if he remembers that He is the Creator, he'll remember that He is the creation. 
Amen? And that He is not on the same level as the Creator. Hallelujah. We're talking about men who forget God. We're talking about trusting in the spider's web this morning. And we're talking about the world, sure. But we're also talking about the church. Because I'm telling you, when I look around, I don't see the church in very much better condition than the world is. Amen? I know that won't preach everywhere, but it'll preach here. We have never been more religious. But how godly are we? Amen? How much of His traits and nature do we possess? Do we look more like Him? Or do we look more like the world? Do we act more like Him? Or do we act more like the world? It does us some good today to take our spiritual temperature and find out where we're at. He said, prepare thyself, Job. Search the fathers. Do a search of their fathers. Are we but of yesterday? Look back at yesterday and see what happened to people who forgot God. See what happened to people when they turned their back, when they walked away from God. And we can look back this morning, not just in the Bible, but in the history of America. What has happened when people turn their back on God? We can look back this morning and we can realize what brings success and what brings failure. Forgetting God to mislay Him, to make Him oblivious to your memory and to your attention. You really think that you do something great because you give God your attention on Sunday morning. Amen? Listen, God ain't looking for no girlfriend. He's looking for a bride. Amen? He ain't looking for a, for, for a, a, a uh, whatever they call them today, a domestic partner, amen? He's looking for somebody that will sell out to him. He's looking for somebody like Brother Slee said this morning that was like David, who was a man after God's own heart. Amen? I can't pronounce this man's name very good, but I'm going to give it a shot. He's a Russian novelist, was a Russian novelist, novelist and historian. Alexander Slavnitsyn. This is what he said about his own country. Talking about Russia. Listen to what he said. Over a half century ago, while I was still a child, I recall hearing a number of the older folks offer the following explanation for the great disasters that had befallen the nation of Russia. And this is what he heard the older folks say. Men have forgotten God. That's why all this has happened. Now listen to what he goes on to say. Since then I have spent 50 years working on the history of our revolution. In the process, I have read hundreds of books, collected hundreds of testimonies, and have already contributed eight volumes of my own toward the effort of clearing away the rubble and explaining what happened. But if I were asked today, this very moment, to explain what happened, to explain what swallowed up some 60 million people, I could not put it any better than the old folks did whenever they said men have forgotten God. That's why it all happened. Amen? If we forget God, Satan will rule. If we forget God, our nation is doomed. And this great novelist, after all of his study, after all of his looking at history, comes away with the same thought that Mama had when she said, men have forgotten God. That's what's happened. See, the explanation ain't quite as complicated as people would like to think. Amen. History records the destruction and devastation that forgetting God has done. Scripture reveals the plight of those who have forgotten God. God warns us over and over again in His Word for us not to forget God. Peter, 2 Peter, the third chapter, the fifth verse, Peter said, they willingly are ignorant. In other words, they are willingly forgetting God. Willingly ignorant. Who? Those that walk after their own lust. Those that scoff and say, where is the promise of His coming? Those that have forgotten about God. So forgetting God is not unique. It's not strange. It's not a new thing. Oh, but the results today are the same as they've always been. It's a real danger. Not just for the world, but for God's people. In Scripture, God tells us over and over again not to forget Him. Not to forget Him. In so many words, He says, be careful 
that you do not forget the Lord your God. And this is spoken, maybe not in those exact words, but in Scripture over and over and over again. Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, the 19th verse. Deuteronomy 8 and 19. It says, And it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, ye shall surely perish. That's Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, the 19th verse. If you forget God, there is a testimony against you today, against me today. If I forget God, I will surely perish. Psalms 9 and 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. Psalms 50 and 22 says, Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Without God there is no deliverer. Without God there is no hope. Without God there is no peace. Yet man in his pride and his self-indulgence has expelled God not only from their lives, but from our classrooms and from our Senate and from our Congress and from our White House and from our homes. And we still see the devastation today that it has always brought. Forgetting God will cause you to lose all hope. Lose all hope. And there are subtle ways of forgetting God that creep into our lives. Oh, we don't read the Word anymore. <clears throat> many people don't go to church anymore. I've never seen any more people. And a good place for you to find this out is on the internet, on Facebook. I use that example because that's where I see it the most. They'll shoot something up there about how God and all His mercy and His grace and how they love Him and all of that. And the rest of the week they live like the devil. Yeah. That goes back to what I've said before. And the next post, they may be cussing somebody out. That goes back to what I said before. Saying that you believe there is a God and living like there is a God is two different things. Amen? Saying there is a God and living like there is a God is two different things. See, God is more than a higher power. He's more than the man upstairs. He's more than the big wheel. Amen? He's more than the big man. He is God. We are His people. We are His creation. We're supposed to be His people. Yet men have forgotten God and turned their back on Him. There is but one way that we can live in sin is that is if we put God out of our memory, out of our mind. If we forget God. Because if we didn't do that, we have to. Because if we didn't, we'd be too miserable. We have to do that in order to live. What was it? Was it Peter that talked about those that lived after the lust of their own flesh? Why? Because they had forgot God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Yet we have put Him aside, put Him on the shelf. We'll serve God when it's convenient. Mm -hmm. Man, that's what man does. When it's convenient, I'll serve God. Well, you know, I would have been at church Sunday, but I was awful busy. Well, then won't you just tell the truth? I would have been at church Sunday if I thought it was as important as the other things that I wanted to do. Yeah. If I thought God was as important as the other things that I had on my list, I would have put Him at the top and did that, and then I would have went and did the other things on the list. If man forgets God, and man has, America has forgotten God, and I don't care how many bills they pass, we're going to continue to sink in the muck and the mire that these that these political, and I started to say religious, I guess they are religious, 